what is winter sowing, you say? Well, it's a wonderful method where you can plant your little seeds in a recycled plastic container, kind of creating a bit of a greenhouse effect. You plop them outside in the freezing cold, and once the weather starts warming up and spring gets around, the seeds will germinate on their own time. Mother Nature will take over from there. And it'll cost you pennies, just the price of your seeds, because all the materials that you're going to be using, you probably already have. Hey, what's up guys? I'm coming to you in the beginning of March from my Zone 5 backyard. Um, I've decided to do some winter sowing. So as you can see behind me, there's still quite a bit of snow here in Toronto. Um, we have a little bit of melt off, but I mean, with this crazy weather, the snow keeps piling back up. So the weather is very unpredictable now. The thing about it is that the temperatures are staying below freezing. So you can still winter sow. You can basically winter sow any time as long as you have temperatures that get below freezing. So whether that's January, February, March, that's cool. Our, our uh, last frost date is all the way in May. So I'm pretty confident that I can still winter sow. So I'm going to go inside, show you all my uh, containers <laughs> that I've been collecting and hopefully we can get a good harvest from the winter sowing to fill some of the bare spots that I have in the garden here. So these are the containers that I'm planning to use for my winter sowing. Um, I've been collecting them for a while. Most of them are just clear plastic containers from juice, mostly juice. And I've cut them across. I know it's kind of hard to see. Let me, let me uh, do that a little better so you can see that better. So I have 40 containers in all. Now, mind you, the circumference inside, the area that you have to plant inside these aren't as wide as the milk jug. So I'm not going to put as many seeds in each one of these as maybe I would have if I had a larger container. Okay, I'm going to give you a close up here of how I prepared my containers. So as you can see across the top here, I put several holes there so that we can get some good air circulation from the top. You cut the container across the middle, but you have to leave a little bit of a hinge there because you will be closing it and duct taping it. And make sure on the bottom you put several holes for drainage. That's very important. All of your containers you have to put holes in the bottom for drainage. So you cut the container in half, leaving a little bit of a hinge, and then you have to put holes across the top. Now you're not going to have the lids on these containers, so that's also going to allow for the moisture to go in, and it's also going to allow for good airflow. The one thing I must uh, caution you is it's you have to find a tool. I um, couldn't use the drill. These were too flimsy for a drill. So I just had a, like a, almost like a screwdriver, uh, ice pick type of thing to make these holes. So you should do those when, before you cut the container, because it's a lot sturdier before you cut the container in half to put your holes in the bottom. You can really choose any plastic container that's either clear or opaque to winter sew in as long as you have the ability to put some holes in it for drainage and to make sure that it's big enough to hold a plant. So I figured I would need a container to hold my soil. So I just got a little box that I had around the house in the garage and I lined it with a black garbage bag. Um, so that I can pour my soil in there and not make a mess. So I'm using miracle Grow potting mix. 
Now it's really important that you use a good potting mix and not use a seed starting mix because a seed starting mix is too light and not uh, conducive for this project. So it's best to start with a good potting mix and it'll give your plants a fighting chance. So let's go ahead and get this opened up and we'll just pour it into the uh, container and we'll put a little water on it. Right now, the soil is very dry. So we want it to be at a consistency where it, when you squeeze it, it will cling together, but you don't want the water dripping out of it. So I'm just gonna add a bit of water to this and we'll just give it a good mix. Oh gosh, it feels so good to get my hands in dirt. And I have my garden gloves right there, but it's been a long winter. I haven't touched dirt all winter and I just absolutely love the smell. That might be weird, but maybe some of you gardeners also like the smell of the dirt. So I think we're at a good consistency. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start filling my containers with the soil and I'm going to try my best not to make too much of a mess. Now I don't want to put it all the way up so I'm going to leave a little bit of space near the top. One down, 39 to go. <laughs> wash my dirty hands and come back and we'll decide what seeds we want to plant. Okay, so we're gonna get going here and get these seeds planted. Now just a little tip, uh, I use these yogurt containers to make garden markers. I picked up this little tip from watching one of the channels um, when uh, they were winter sowing. So you just cut around the top and around the bottom and you just have the middle part, the middle plastic area left. So then you just cut those in little strips, such as this. And then you write on the underside that is clear white. Hence, you get some garden markers. And you get to reuse all your yogurt containers. Now you do have to make sure that you use um, waterproof, permanent markers or else uh, you won't be able to figure out what you've planted. Now some people actually write on the outside of their containers or they after they tape up the container with duct tape, they uh, tape there. But I've, I'm going to try these little markers and hopefully they will do well for me. So I'm going to start by planting uh, this uh, calendula, Indian prints, I just love the way that uh, that's a pop of bright yellow with that orange center. So we're going to start with the calendula. So as you can see, there's not a lot of surface area in, in this particular container. So you got to make sure that you give it enough spacing. You don't want to crowd inside of your container because then it's going to be really difficult to separate the seeds after they've grown up. So this is what the seeds look like here. Not too bad, pretty big. So we're gonna use this little tool here, this little divot, get that focus. Just gonna poke a few holes and just plant them according to the directions on the seed packet. The back of every seed packet gives you some great information about how deep to plant. This one says about a quarter of an inch, so not too deep at all. And I'm just going to sow a little seed in each 
Oh. Then I have this little tool that acts like a little spade or shovel. Just going to cover them lightly. Now I'm not worried about watering them in because the potting soil is still quite moist. Um, so I'm not really worried about that. So they're in. So we're just going to get our duct tape and tape up our first container. So I'm just using just your run of the mill duct tape and we're just gonna tear off a piece and just tape right around the container. Oh, can't forget my marker. That's my first of many upward. So this is where I decided to put the jugs. It's kind of open, but uh, this is the best place for sunlight. I've been watching it out in the side yard here. And this seems to be the best place to get the longest amount of sunlight. If they don't do well here, I can always move them. As you can see, we still have quite a bit of snow out here. And that's it guys, that is my first batch of winter sewn containers. Thanks for watching. I'll post updates as my plants start to germinate and my seedlings start to grow up. Take care.